Hey everybody, Pedro here for Adafruit, and today we're gonna show you how to build a gum blade. We've made this free and easy to print design that we hope will please you Final Fantasy fanatics. The files are available to download and modify for free. You can get the materials needed for this project in the shop at adafruit.com. To start off, we'll find references to base the 3D models on, and after a couple of tweaks, we'll split the model into several parts to easily fit on our 3D printer. Mine is split into four different sections that include the blade tip, middle blade, hilt, and the handle tip. You can modify the design by editing the vector paths that make up the geometry. If you wanted the handle to fit differently, you can adjust the curves to fit your hand. You can then update the link geometry when you finish customizing. The parts are printed on our Type A Machines Series 1 3D printer. The 0.4 millimeter nozzle can output high detailed parts with excellent precision. Its enormous build area lets you print cubes measuring 305 millimeters. Use PLA for large accurate prints to keep warping down to a minimum. The custom support structures were created using Simplify 3D. They break away easily without leaving any sort of artifacts on the model. Here's a quick tip on 3D printing the blade tips. When printing small pointy objects, heat from the nozzle can spread throughout the object. This doesn't allow the layers to cool in time, and the model ends up looking melted. The trick here is to print two models spaced on the opposite side of the bed. You can of course print a smaller throwaway cylinder if you don't need two models. To give the handle a nice cushion grip, we'll use the new Semiflex material from NinjaFlex. This prints with more detail and less material, among other features. Check out our review in a previous episode here. Go ahead and clean up the remaining parts using Haku flat pliers. Remove the leftover support material. The cylinder is printed in one piece and is held up by a small amount of support material. Insert a small flat spatula into the cylinder and gently rotate until it can freely spin. Once all four pieces are clean, lay them out on a long table to assemble. Parts are held together with the aid of these awesome little skinny sticks. The flat size makes these perfect for holding blades together without taking up too much internal space. We'll go ahead and cut six of these down to 44 and 23 millimeters each. Tolerances should be tight enough to dry fit all of the pieces together. Make sure that all of the skinny sticks aren't too small or too long for each part. Now we'll go ahead and glue the parts together using our favorite adhesive, E6000. Use a couple of drops in each slot and spread a small amount around the flat areas. Secure each stick into the slot and then add glue on both sides of each stick. You'll want to make sure that the handle tip isn't inserted upside down. Now we'll glue the semi-flex handle grips on. Spread a small amount of E6000 around the flat bottom of the grips. Make sure to test fit the grips. The long cure time will give you plenty of time to adjust the grips until it feels comfortable in your hand. Curing takes about a day to fully dry, but if you're careful, you can continue gluing the rest of the blades together. Don't worry if you apply a little too much glue, it's easy to wipe the access off with your gloved finger or a cleaning wipe. Doing so will actually help seal and blend the two pieces together, hiding the seam. After all pieces have fully cured and dried, we can work on the details. Clean up any remaining materials around the trigger guard with a hobby knife, and then use a small file to completely smooth it out. Small leftover pieces can cut your finger while twirling the gun around if you don't clean out all of the support material. We'll complete the charm details by adding a medium split ring. Attach the included line pendant to a chain and then use a clasp to attach that to the split ring, completing your new gun blade. To make squalls get up, you're gonna need some pleather. You can safety pin a fur boa to the collar of a leather jacket. The leather pants, gloves, boots, and double belts bring out the detail in the costume. All right, so that's the completed gum blade. This was a lot of fun to model and you can easily customize it and print your own. It's lightweight and easy to wield around for your next cosplay event. So what types of cosplay props would you 3D print? Let us know in the comments below. And for more modeling and slicing techniques, don't forget to tune in every Thursday to our 3D printing show. And don't forget to subscribe for more 3D printed projects from Adafruit. See you guys next week.